Attention, you are about to hear the captivating voice of an icon in the movie industry. You have heard him and seen him in performances in over 140 films. He's met and influenced many world leaders, and now he's about to tell you how to unite the America he loves. That job's filled. Unique. Unique. Brilliant. Brilliant. And unpredictable. Unpredictable. Robert Davi is a renaissance man who writes, directs, sings, and does it all with excellence. Yeah, it's okay. We're all very impressed, but let's get on with it now. Robert Davi believes he should use his voice to both repay and help unite America, the America that made his dreams come true. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Robert Davi Show. Welcome to The Robert Davi Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McCotter, former member of Congress and recovering politician. I cannot be blamed for what they're doing now, thank God. With us today on Robert's show is Brett R. Smith. Brett is a professional commercial artist working in the graphic novel industry as an editor, production manager, and creative director. He is also a color artist in the comic book industry, a storyboard artist in the advertising industry, and a graphic artist for multiple clients. You can find Brett at brs76.com, which is his website. He's with us today to discuss the entertainment industry, the comic book industry, and conservative movement and politics in general. Brett, welcome to the Robert Davi Show. Hey, thanks. Really appreciate it. That's no problem. Can you tell us a little about what's happening in the comics world? I've seen recently there's been a development regarding Superman. Yeah, recently um, DC Comics has decided to take um, a new approach with a new Superman. So we're not talking about Clark Kent here. We're talking about Clark and Lois Lane's son, whose name is Jonathan Kent, named after um, Pa Kent. And Jonathan Kent, the new Superman, is uh, LGBT, is bisexual, which is kind of similar to what they did to Tim Drake, who is uh, one of the Robins in the Batman universe a couple months ago. Um, Tim's been around for 30 years, uh, this version of Robin. There's been multiple ones, Dick Grayson being the original one, but... um, it's one of these instances where you've got 30, 40 years of canon of Tim Drake Robin being heterosexual. He had multiple uh, girlfriends and love interests, and then all of a sudden they flip the character on its head, similar to what they do when they gender swap things. Um, but in this case, they're turning heterosexual characters into uh, homosexual characters or bisexual characters. And in this case with Superman, um, it's obviously an established character, but they're, you know, they're, they're going this route because they think that there are sales behind it. And, um, I'm kind of looking at this and thinking to myself, this isn't even going to crack the top 50. It's, it's just not going to sell. Well, didn't, didn't Brett, uh, didn't Marvel do this with the rawhide kid as well? Marvel's been doing it too. I yeah. Think. But- and the, the coin. Yeah, and the question the question that I have is, are there characters, are there new characters that are created right off the bat that are LGBTQ or whatever? Have they had those, have any of those break through yet? You know, uh, with Marvel, probably the most uh, famous one was Iceman, uh, Bobby Drake. And uh, that, that was done a couple of years ago where they, they just, he just came out as being, uh, bisexual or homosexual, I think it was homosexual, and yet you had almost 60 years of canon of this guy being having love interests with women. Um, so, and, and Marvel and DC, Marvel's tried to do this with some new characters, but they've never broken out. Um, you know, they're they're largely just just doing this with established characters, and I, I just see it as, as more of a sales gimmick than anything. It, it might give them a little bit of a bump. But, um, you know, regardless, these are pop cultural icons, and this is just kind of um, what you see out of Hollywood and what you're seeing out of the comic book industry. It's, it's just this pushing of a narrative, pushing of a message, and in this case, kind of forcing sexuality um, on younger readers. And I think, the, yeah, also, if I can, I think that 
Marvel did this. I think the one that was not part of the canon was a member of Alpha Flight. I forget the name of the character that did not have a long history of romantic engagements with women and just came out. I forget which one it was, the Canadian super team. The question, uh, though, it was Superman. Yeah, go ahead. It was it was North Star. And um, OK, and, and I, th- I think they did that like in the 80s or the 90s. So yeah, know, it was one of the first. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, it, so, you know, kind of back then it was avant garde and it was something, you know, kind of risque to do um, these days. You just, you know, it's like Dean Kane said the other day that, you know, this thing was Superman. It's just bandwagoning. There's, you know, it, there's nothing creative about this. And and that that's kind of where I fall on it as well. Well, I think that there's that's two parts of it that I find very interesting. One is the fact that it's retcon to do this uh, with existing characters, and like you said, kind of a bandwagon, kind of latch onto an existing icon. When instead they should be creating their own characters, kind of like North Star was back in the day. It took a while, mm-hmm. but it made sense for the character and for his arc. And the, and the second part of it is what's what I find interesting, too, is it's not just the fact that the new Jonathan Kent Superman is bisexual. It's that he's woke. That's And yeah. I think Ben Dominich wrote about this at the Federalist. This isn't just a case of, okay, he's Superman, he's bisexual, okay, that's a nice subplot, whatever. Oh, no, he has to go fully woke, and they have to bring in the left-wing politics with it. Oh, yeah, and that's that's been going on at Marvel for probably the last 10 10- 10, 15 years, and DC has been a little bit slower to start to, you, you know, see the, the woke claws sink in, but um, it's been happening uh, slowly. Marvel was definitely far more aggressive with pushing the woke agenda and the social justice warrior tropes, um, and they're, you know, when you read this stuff in the comics, it's so forced, um, and it's, it's one of those things when you read it, it kind of it, it, it breaks the suspension of disbelief, which is, you know, um, you know, that's kind of incumbent when it comes to storytelling. You've got to be immersed in the story. And when you run into these social justice warrior lines or storylines or tropes, um, it just kills the su- suspension of disbelief. It's really cringe. And like I said, a lot of it's very forced. Um, and, and I just it just it's just bad writing and bad editorial. We're here at the Robert Dobby Show talking to Brett R. Smith. Brett's a professional commercial artist working in the graphic novel industry as well as working for several clients. You can find his work at brs76.com. I'm Thaddeus McCotter filling in for Robert who's away working on a project. Brett, have, have DC or Marvel, have they seen any bumps in circulation related to pushing the woke agenda? No. Um, it's it's sales have been pretty brutal. Uh, right now, manga, uh, the, you know, Japanese uh, comic books are just eating American comics lunch, especially with the big two, Marvel and DC. And um, it's just such a shame because you know I, I worked on Superman back in 2011. Um, with the, they relaunched the book around the time that Man of Steel came out, and. Um, it was kind of coordinated with Man of Steel from the standpoint of, you know, we lost the, uh, the red trunks and there were some changes made to the character uh, to make him a little bit more relevant uh, and modern. And I just kind of look at what they're doing. And it's like you said, you know, they're kind of retconning this stuff. And I just think, you know, Superman's a cultural icon. He's an American icon. Uh, it's, a, it's one of the most largest recognizable brands that s in the entire world and um you know if this stuff isn't sacred you know if we're not willing to kind of defend some of this stuff especially things like superman um you know what are we willing to defend uh you know what well, Brett, what liner you know well brett uh, also i apologize for not adding that you're a co-host of the political punks podcast we had your co-host lisa de pasquale on earlier this week so let me That's make right. sure that everybody knows to go to Political Punk's podcast, check it out. It's a great podcast. Brett, there was a scene, yeah, we, and I saw it in the snippets regarding uh, the new Superman, Jonathan Kent, where he's talking to his father, and he looks at his father and says, you know, did you basically, did you do enough? What did you do about social injustice and everything else? And, and what I thought was fascinating about that is here's this, this kid 
looking at a father who did so much for so long, created so much, and he's just looking at him, berating him as if he's never done a thing and he's not, he's worthless. And that somehow the kid is morally superior and enlightened is going to change the world. What I find fascinating about that is this is coming from a character whose entire existence is premised upon trying to ride the popularity and the success that his father had built within the comic industry. There's an irony there. I don't think that the woke or appreciate the irony of which their existence is founded. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, that dialogue that you were that you're quoting, you know, it, it's it's straight out of, you know, like environmentalist talking points. I, I see that like in political ads. You know, what have you done? What are you going to do, you know, to save the environment? In this case, it's, you know, to to uh, affect social justice and change. But this is just bad writing. I mean, who talks this way? Out, you know, you know, aside from like people on Twitter or Democrat Democrat pundits. Yes, they they turn their brains into bumpers for 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 sticker for bumper stickers. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and so the so the problem is is that it manifests itself is it uh, these all they know is what they've been told and all they talk to are each other. And that's right. one of the fundamental problems and why their literature and everything else comes across as Soviet socialist realism uh, in one, gar one guise or another. It's just basically pedestrian, boring talking points. And what you're not going to find at the Robert Davi show is boring pedestrian talking points. We're talking with Brett R. Smith about comics, culture in general, and we will be back after these messages. Have you heard about Vine to Bar chocolate? It's the winemaker's chocolate, the world's first chocolate made with well-vined Chardonnay Mark from the beautiful coastal vineyards of North America. Gently pressed grapes are harvested after juicing, dried and finely milled and carefully blended into the finest dark chocolate. The Chardonnay Mark contains highly beneficial grape nutrients, flavanols, and has a natural sweetness that flavors the luscious dark chocolate. Mouthwatering, flavorful, delectable dark chocolate goodness with Chardonnay sweetness and beneficial nutrients. And it's alcohol-free, too. It's Vine to Bar chocolate. Order some today at vinetobar.com. That's V-I-N-E-T-O-B-A-R.com. Cold ship to your door, it's Vine to Bar. Vine to Bar chocolate. Visit us at vinetobar.com. Do you want to fly somewhere, anywhere in the world? Smart travelers call myflightsearch.com for the best deals on flight tickets. Going to Manila, Bangkok, London, how about Singapore? Call myflightsearch.com for the lowest flight tickets available. What about a local vacation? Let's say you want to fly to Vegas, Orlando, Miami, Los Angeles, or Denver. Pick up the phone and call myflightsearch.com right now. We have exclusive deals that you can't find anywhere else. The only way you can get these low airline prices is by calling us. We have so many low prices available, we can't possibly tell them to you right here and now. If you're flying somewhere anytime in the next six months and you want the lowest airline ticket prices anywhere, you owe it to yourself to save a ton of money. So pick up your cell phone and call myflightsearch.com right now. Call 800-445-3166. 800-445-3166. That's 800-445-3166. Call now. 800-445-3166. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it. You could junk it. Or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. Robert Davi. You know, 
I'm the one delivering the message, not receiving it. Hi, I'm Thaddeus McCotter filling in for Robert Davi, who's away working on a special project he hopes to bring to audiences in the near future. Our guest today is Brett R. Smith, a professional commercial artist working in the graphic novel industry. He's also the co-host of the Political Punks podcast. In short, Brett is a talented renaissance man. <laughs> Brett, we ask, I always like to ask the question, what got you into your vocation? Now, you're a commercial artist, a professional commercial artist, which is a very difficult profession to strive in. How did you get into that? Was it a love of comics? Was it a love of art in general? What was it? Well, it's funny we're talking about Superman because the first movie that I ever saw as a kid was the 1978 Richard Donner Superman the movie. And that's kind of what got me into comic books. And um, I was into comic books before I could read because I would just follow the panels and I loved the artwork. And I also had a natural ability to draw from an early age. And my parents encouraged me and um, supported me throughout my entire life um, because I kind of knew in and around seven or eight years old um, that I wanted to uh, not only work in the comic book industry, but also make my own comics. And I was able to do that. So it was, um, it was a combination of movies and uh, not only comic book movies, but just movies in general that attracted me to visual storytelling. And that's essentially what comics are. They're, they're visual storytelling. It's graphic storytelling. And, um, you know, I think in a lot of ways, comic books are modern day mythology. And in a lot of ways, with characters like Superman and Batman and Iron Man, they're American mythology. And, and they, they reflect us. And, they, and in a lot of ways, they reflect the best about us. Well, I can certainly relate to that as a musician. Well, you know, in full disclosure, I was a co avid comic book reader when I was younger, before I discovered rock and roll. <laughs> but I always loved the Marvel Universe, Captain America, the Avengers, Iron Man, Spider-Man, a little bit of DC, um, but that, that's okay. I thought they were okay. Batman especially was fine. But basically, I was a Marvel Universe person, but then I discovered rock and roll. And what you're saying about American mythology in particular, it also goes to what I was telling people that in the past, generations had used quotations from the Bible or other great literary works as a common cultural currency. And what we have today, starting with the baby boomers, I'm Gen X myself, but the baby boomers and others, they use song lyrics yes. to have that cultural uh, currency amongst themselves to a certain extent, as well as the American mythology, but both are distinctly American mythologies, although some of it has a British twist on it. So when, when you're looking at this, what types of changes and we are we continuing to see as they inject the woke agenda into what has been a longstanding American mythology that was not only for domestic consumption, but for international consumption? Um, I think that um, there's a lot of parallels with comics and modern day films and cinema from the standpoint of uh, cultural changes. And uh, comics... Marvel and DC were certainly far more early to go woke, uh, especially Marvel, like I was talking about. Um, and you've seen Hollywood sort of start to drift in that direction with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DC movies. But um, I, I think that, you know, your comparison to comics and visual storytelling to music is, is perfect um, because it's an art form, essentially, of telling stories. And, um, and that's the most powerful art form uh, or way of messaging out there that I know of, even going back to Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, which is essentially kind of like a giant graphic novel on the ceiling. It's the Bible told in sequential order uh, visually. So um, the storytelling aspect has really been dumbed down. Uh, it's suffered. Um, there isn't a lot of storytelling going on. There's just these expositions of um, characters, reaffirming their wokeness or creating these sort of um, fake constructed ceilings to break through, which have been obviously broken through probably for 60 years in comics from the standpoint of like women's rights. Um, so 
there's nothing new going on. There's nothing exciting. There's, you know, the thing about woke, you know, Trump says, you know, woke, woke turns everything to, you know, crap. That's true. And that's what's happened in comics. The stories have really suffered. We're just not getting the type, the type of stories that you and I grew up on in the 70s and the 80s and the early 90s. Yeah, they're, you, they're turning art into a vehicle for ideology rather than viewing mm -hmm. art as something that expresses the universality of the human condition, one which can help us edify ourselves and others related in our relations amongst each other, both internally, mm -hmm. externally, whatever. In the final analysis, art is there for itself. It is not in the service of politics, but with the woke, everything is political. Everything has to be politicized, and you have to be compelled to be obeisant to their dictates. Otherwise, you will be canceled. And we're seeing some of this, uh, the blowback, people are voting with their pocketbooks on some of this, and you, you talked about cinema. We, we saw an instance, I think Christian Toto has an article up about the new James Bond film and the fact that uh, people aren't responding to it the way that was expected, was it? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, you'd think that that character would be sort of, um, unbreakable but they did so much woke marketing uh, before the movie came out you know the directors out there saying that sean connery's james bond is a rapist and um then they floated this idea that this um woman character in the movie was going to be the first black 007 woman and it, you know it was just kind of like do we just have james bond like is james bond in this film <laughs> You know, the one, even the one that Roger Moore uh, uh, portrayed, uh, who is probably just as womanizing as Sean Connery. Um, you know, my, you know I'm, I'm, I'm partial to uh, Tim Dalton and, and also Dobby's film. So that's, I've always found that Craig is almost like um, impersonating Tim, uh, Tim Dalton's Bond in a lot of ways. But um, I've been a huge fan of Bond over the years. So I... Um, this is the first time in my entire life that I'm probably not going to go and see it in the theater. I'll just wait until it's out on digital and I'll rent it. Well, it's one of the interesting things, again, uh, I guess being woke means you have no sense of irony. But what they're doing to Superman, what they're doing to James Bond, what they're doing to every iconic character they can find is ultimately what they want to do to you, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, I like to say that the cultural Marxists only see what they haven't destroyed yet, and that's what they do. They take what you love and what you cherish and, which, and what you see as valuable, and they destroy it, and then they recreate it in their own image. And then when you don't love it and cherish it the same way that you did the original, you're a bigot, you're a sexist, you're a Nazi, you're a homophobe. You know, that's kind of the rinse, wash, and repeat of the left when it comes to these pop culture um, franchises like Bond or Superman. And um, it's like I said, you know, if we're not willing to defend these things, which re reflect and affirm that which is good about America, what are we willing to defend and conserve at this point? We'll be back here at the Robert Davi Show. I'm Thaddeus McCotter filling in for Robert. We're talking to Brett R. Smith about all things comics and all things cultural and entertainment in general. And we will be back after these messages. If you have ever thought about remodeling your bathroom but were worried it would take too long or cost too much, then stop worrying. Right now, Jacuzzi Bath Remodel has designed a collection of high-quality, custom products and perfected the one-day remodeling experience so you could enjoy your new bathroom faster than ever before. It's a worry-free bath remodel from the most trusted name brand in the business, Jacuzzi. A Jacuzzi bath system fits in your existing tub space. It's a no-mess installation with an amazing style selection, factory certified installers and a limited lifetime warranty just dial pound 250 on your mobile device right now and say the keyword update for 50 percent off installations with no interest and no payments for 12 months replace that old bathtub with a walk-in shower for a safer bathing experience if you've lived in your home for over 15 years it's time to remodel your bathroom for a virtual or in-home appointment dial pound 250 now and say the keyword update that's pound 250 and say the keyword update 
If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. That's 800-378-3212. I'm Al Simon, 91 years young. I created Balance 7 20 years ago. At 67, I went to see the doctor for the first time in my life and found out that I had medical problems. He told me that it was normal for my age. I don't believe God intended us to be sick and old. I decided to find something to bring my health back. For 10 years, I studied pH and how important it is to the human system. Balance 7 gave me back what I lost by getting older. I no longer get out of bed with a joint discomfort. Balance 7 can do for you what it has done for me and many others. In three days' time, you'll feel more energy, less joint discomfort, and clarity of thinking. No doctor or hospital can do what Balance 7 can do for you. Balance 7 is the key to unlocking the healthy immune system. Bring your body back to balance. Order now. Receive free shipping with the code word AL. Go to balance7.com. That's balance7.com. Order now and get your free shipping and a free gift with your order. Go to balance7.com. Use the code word AL. Attention real estate investors, do you need cash immediately? If you own one or multiple rental properties, you can use your equity to get cash out fast. The best part is we don't need tax returns or even a good credit score. At America's Loan Source, we are not a bank and we don't have bank rules. We make the decisions to loan you money and there's no limit how much we can give you. Some clients have gotten as much as $500,000 or more within days. Use the money any way you want. If you own one rental property or a hundred and COVID has left you in a cash crunch, we can help you turn your equity into fast cash. Call now for details and close in as little as 10 days and get the cash you need. 800-353-1760-800-353-1760-800-353-1760. That's 800-353-1760. The Robert Dobby Show. I'm Dwayne Robinson, LAPD. I'm in charge here. Not anymore. Welcome back to the Robert Dobby Show. I'm Thaddeus McCotter, your guest host. Robert's away working on a project that he hopes to bring to audiences relatively soon. With us today is Brett R. Smith, a professional commercial artist working in the graphic novel industry as an editor production manager and creative director. He's also a color artist in the comic book industry, a storyboard artist in the advertising industry, and a graphic artist for multiple clients. He's also the co-host of the Political Punks podcast, which I encourage you all to listen to. You can find out more about Brett at his website, brs76.com. Brett, culture is so important, as Andrew Breitbart always pointed out. Politics is downstream from culture. Why do more people in the conservative, populist, and Republican movements not appreciate the role that culture plays in politics? Um, that's a great question, and um, I, I'm not really sure why. I think in some cases they kind of chalk this stuff up to being silly entertainment stuff, um, I, and I think that's the old guard of the conservative movement, sort of the boomer class, you know, oh, that's just movies, oh, that's just comic books, that's cartoons, that's just all silly stuff, it doesn't matter. You know, we're gonna spend our weekends drinking scotch and reading novels on 18th century warfare or something, you know. I, I don't know, they're kind of stuffy when it comes to pop culture, and what they don't understand is that as important as education is, and obviously, we have allowed the left to take over that institution. 
entertainment is just as important because when your kids aren't in school, what are they spending their time doing? You know, what are they watching on their tablets? What are they reading? You know, you can't just let your kids sit in front of the TV like Gen X did, you know? Um, and, and, I, and I think one of the reasons why culture is so important, especially to Gen X, because unlike the boomers, we didn't have, you know, the, the music that you were talking about. We didn't have Vietnam. We didn't have um, the race riots, MLK, all that stuff. That's, that's the cultural glue that holds that generation together. What holds Gen X together are all the movies and the Saturday morning cartoons and all that stuff that we grew up having. It's the pop culture glue which holds our generation together, and that's why I think it's so important. And I think that it's important for conservatives who are our age and younger. I think that they accept that entertainment is worth fighting for as far as an institution, because we've allowed that to be taken over by the left, just as we have education. So I think things are changing, and that's a good thing. Well, I think you're absolutely right. As a Gen Xer, I, we grew up with the Reagan, who was the president of our lifetime. He showed us the, the conservative policies worked, and the freedom worked. We saw the Soviet Union uh, dissolve underneath the weight of its own tyrannical totalitarian communism. And yet, we watch culture, which is basically on an even keel. And yet the baby boomers still dominated the culture to a large degree. I mean, how many times do we have to watch a Woodstock retrospective, for God's sakes? Things like that, yet they refuse to let that go. And so to some ways, our own culture was still heavily influenced by the baby boomers. But what happened politically was, I think you saw the, the divide between the baby boomers over the, over the Vietnam War was a rift that never healed in that generation. Many in the artistic community obviously were anti-war. And so they considered one, you know, the, the conservative members of the baby boomers considered the entertainment wing of the baby boom the other, mm -hmm. the, on the other side of that divide. And so they did not get along very much. And so to a certain extent, uh, Gen X and below conservative movement, we never really had any entree into that world. And so we became more of a consumer of art rather than producers of art. What do you think about that? No, absolutely. I often say that as conservatives, we're, we're, when it comes to pop culture, um, you know, because often I say the culture war, but, but a lot of conservatives you know, uh, take that for meaning, you know, gay marriage and abortion. But, but really, when I say culture war, I'm talking about pop culture and entertainment. And I think with pop culture, especially conservatives are cultural observers. And we need to be cultural creators. Because if we're not creating the artwork, and if we're not creating the graphic novels and the comics and the children's books and the cartoons and the films, if we're not creating that stuff, we know who, wi we know who will. And we know what kind of artwork we're going to get. And, and at this point, you know, they're not hiding anything anymore. The left used to be much more subversive with their entertainment. Now it's all on the surface. And it's just purely Soviet cultural Marxist crap. Uh, and that's yeah, why I I'm a big supporter of conservatives getting in the fight and stop just being cultural observers and become cultural creators. Well, and it's also because we are cultural observers and we understand the universality of the human condition and we can see that and we can relate that. Where the left, it's all ideological, where they try to fit their ideology onto the world rather than fit their minds to the world. So right. it's rather backwards for them, which I think why a lot of their stuff just falls flat and is box office uh, poison to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But it's also, it's also rather interesting when you talk about it. To be a, a conservative creator, it's essentially what you do because so much of what the left does is so destructive and by their own virtue signaling, they've reduced their greatest asset, which was their subversive, uh, their subversion of the culture through entertainment. Now they're out in the open. So I think there's a, there's a great stake and I would hope that more conservatives would support uh, creative endeavors by their own fellow uh, like-minded people, because otherwise, like you're absolutely right, Brett, the left will dominate this. And one of the ironies that I think we had on this show uh, last week, we had Katja Sedgwick, who was, who was an American citizen by way of the Soviet Union. We had Amina Milanic, who came out of war-torn Yugoslavia and is now an American citizen. 
And what got them so interested in the United States, what made them want to come to the United States, was not all the Radio Free Europe or anything else. It was rock and roll and American films. Yeah. It was American yeah. culture yeah. that first attracted them to this, these shores. I mean, what's going to happen, Brett, if we aren't still producing that? If all these people in the world are saying is it a woke American culture that tells us America is a systemically racist, evil place? Yeah, think about in the 80s, the, the black market for VHS over in the USSR. And they, you know, they just they couldn't get enough of the action films. They loved Sly and Arnold and Jean-Claude Van Damme. They loved Chuck Norris. Um, they loved the Westerns. You know, we're still regarded amongst the Europeans in the world as being cowboys. Um, so we need, to, we need to preserve that. Um, and that's, that's kind of why I, you know, uh, you know, left working for Marvel in DC after I was blacklisted for doing Clinton Cash graphic novel and started producing my own books because, you know, like Dobby, like Nick Searcy and Dean Cain and others, I believe we've got to create our own entertainment. We need to tell our own stories, and we've got to we've got to get in this fight one way or another, whether it's through private investment or crowdfunding. Um, you know, if you're a, an artist and and if you're a conservative creator, you've got to get in the fight. This is the Robert Davi Show. I'm Thaddeus McCotter filling in for Robert, and we're talking with Brett R. Smith, who is a professional commercial artist. And Brett, one of the things that I would like to ask you and continue probably on into our next segment is, you talked about how you are currently working, producing your own graphic novels. You worked on the Clinton Cash, which was a number one uh, bestseller. What does it take to get a conservative graphic novel, not a conservative out there, but just a good graphic novel done these days? Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I've done both, um, you know, kind of hyper political books like Clinton Cash graphic novel. And I've also done completely apolitical books uh, like mm -hmm. um, uh, the graphic novel Blood, um, which I did, which is a, a werewolf western. Um, but I try and pick projects and work with clients and kind of field projects that, you know, don't tear down America. For one, I mean that's that's just kind of a basic uh, bar that it's got to it's got to it's got to meet. But I think um, I just think we need uh, more investment, private capital into this stuff at this point. The crowdfunding is a great way to get this stuff off the ground, but it's it's it can't be the only way. We're talking with Brett R. Smith here at the Robert Davi Show. I'm Thaddeus McCotter filling in for Robert, and we will be back with more on comics and culture after this. If you've got a small business, you know there's nothing more valuable than your time. So why waste it at the post office? Stamps.com makes it easy to mail and ship right from your computer. No special equipment required. Whether you're in office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop, or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com will make your life easier. You'll even get exclusive discounts on postage and shipping from USPS and UPS. And their new Rate Advisor tool lets you compare shipping rates across carriers so you always find the best option. Save time and money with Stamps.com. There's no risk, and when you go to Stamps.com and use offer code FOCUS, you'll receive a four-week free trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top and enter code FOCUS. That's Stamps.com, promo code FOCUS. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy, and I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-391-8713, 800-391-8713, that's 800-391-8713.
Do you want to fly somewhere, anywhere in the world? Smart travelers call MyFlightSearch.com for the best deals on flight tickets. Going to Manila, Bangkok, London, how about Singapore? Call MyFlightSearch.com for the lowest flight tickets available. What about a local vacation? Let's say you want to fly to Vegas, Orlando, Miami, Los Angeles, or Denver. Pick up the phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. We have exclusive deals that you can't find anywhere else. The only way you can get these low airline prices is by calling us. We have so many low prices available, we can't possibly tell them to you right here and now. If you're flying somewhere anytime in the next six months and you want the lowest airline ticket prices anywhere, you owe it to yourself to save a ton of money. So pick up your cell phone and call myflightsearch.com right now. Call 800-445-3166. 800-445-3166. That's 800-445-3166. Call now. 800-445-3166. Robert Davi. I guess it's time to start turning overhead. Welcome back to the Robert Davi Show. I'm Thaddeus McCotter, recovering politician, filling in for Robert, who's away working on a project he hopes to bring to audiences shortly. We're talking with Brett R. Smith. Brett is a professional commercial artist as well as the co-host of the Political Punks podcast, which I encourage you all to listen to. You can find out more about Brett at brs76.com. Brett, we started talking about, and I'd like to continue in this final segment, can you talk about what it takes to get a graphic novel off the ground, and what graphic novels are you working on at present? Um, it, it, it takes, um, you know, to, to do the kind of books that I like to do, which is utilizing uh, Marvel and DC talent, because um, I like to utilize the best. So the writers and the artists and the colorists that I use to produce my books are all largely uh, conservative guys, conservative artists who have also been blacklisted from Marvel and DC. Um, and for, for basically just being open conservatives, um, one of the guys I use in particular is Chuck Dixon, who is probably one of the most legendary Batman writers of all time. He created the villain Bane for DC Comics, which was – Tom Hardy played in The Dark Knight uh, Rises. And uh, Chuck's been an open conservative for a long time. You know, not only wrote Batman, but also The Punisher. And he's been blacklisted for Marvel for probably at least 15 years. So I like to reach out and use guys who are not only killers and just awesome at what they do, but also conservative guys. Um, I like to put those people to work because in comics, like Hollywood, the conservatives are either blacklisted because they're out in the open or they're closeted and they're kind of keeping their mouth shut. It's very similar uh, from the standpoint of the hiring. But um, it takes, you know, Clinton Cash cost, uh, you know, cost about 70K for a 112 page graphic novel with Marvel and DC artists. And, you know, we ended up with a, not only an Amazon number one bestseller, but a New York Times number one bestseller. So, it, you know, depending on the page length, obviously influences the cost. But, um, you know, graphic novels probably start like around 60 pages and then, you know, go up. And I've done graphic novels that are, you know, 45 to 56 pages all the way up to 120 pages. So it's, it's um, you know, for me, it's about the quality. And, and, you, and you, you really get that quality when you work with professionals like, like, uh, like the creative teams that I've had in the past. And you've talked about one of your books was a Western with a werewolf in it. Uh, what projects mm -hmm. have you done that you can steer our listeners to so they can participate in your creativity? Sure. Uh, Clint, Clinton Cash, obviously, is, is a, a, you know, a, a, a great read. And as Peter Schweizer likes to say, is the best version to read because it's the most understandable. And it also uses a lot of humor. We, there's a lot of satire and parody, like the National Lampoon used to do in Clinton Cash graphic novel. You can pick that up on Amazon. Uh, Thump the First Bundred Days, which is a retelling of the 2016 election with Donald Trump cast as a cute, lovable bunny named Thump, is also available at Amazon. That was an Amazon number one bestseller. Um, Blood graphic novel was um, some Hollywood guys who approached me with a movie script, and they wanted to turn it into a graphic novel in order to build a fan base and then go and make a live-action uh, feature of it, and uh, it's called Blood, a graphic novel. It's um, set in the 
late 1800s, and um, it's uh, it's kind of a thriller, suspense, horror genre. And um, also did a, a graphic novel um, with Jack Posobiec last year called Agent Poso, which is sort of like a um, G.I. Joe meets Mission Impossible, uh, uh, where the, the world is uh, facing the uh, – America facing threats from a globalist cabal. Sounds kind of familiar. You can pick that up on iconiccomics.com. And um, currently I'm working on an adaptation of a national best-selling book series called Black Tide Rising by John Ringo. And it is a um, zombie apocalypse movie or zombie apocalypse series that we're adapting into a graphic novel. And it is um, told from the story of a special forces family. So dad is retired, Australian Special Forces, mom is uh, Navy, two teenage daughters, and they have to escape the island of Manhattan in the midst of a zombie apocalypse, which is uh, caused by a virus, funny enough. And that book series was written like years ago, so it precluded COVID, but it just so happens that our zombie apocalypse is sparked by an unknown virus that spread throughout America just kind of strange timing, but you can check that out at blacktiderising.com. And I really appreciate it. Um, you know, without the support of the customers out there, uh, conservative projects like this from conservative creators would never be produced. So I, I, you know, all my, all my gratitude to everyone out there who supports my books. I really appreciate it. And I encourage everyone to check them out because they're worth it. This is the Robert Davi Show. I'm Thaddeus Mikata, recovering politician, filling in for Robert. We're talking to Brett R. Smith, professional commercial artist. Right now we're talking about his work in the graphic novel industry, and he's mentioned some of the products you've put out there. And you bring up an excellent point. There is such a large market for just, if nothing else, a political art that entertains and maybe edifies down the road. But it's also very difficult, it's very important for conservatives to give platforms to conservative creators to market their products so people can find them. Because mm -hmm. one of the problems that we see with uh, movie making, and Robert can go into this, I'm sure, uh, ad infinitum, is the fact that it's the distribution of the product, yes. the promotion of the product. If we don't help each other with that, then what good is it? Absolutely. And, um, you know, one of the things that um, some, uh, some conservative creators and I have come up with as far as distribution is forming a company called Iconic Comics. And this was formed by my buddy Tim Lim and um, uh, Johnny Hung out of Temple, Texas. And if everybody, you know, check out IconicComics.com because it is chock full of conservative creators creating comic books and graphic novels, guys like Douglas Ernst and Tim Lim. And we kind of face the same problem when we started doing crowdfunded graphic novels and comics. How do we get retail copies to the public after the campaign is done, whether you're utilizing Kickstarter or Indiegogo? Once that campaign's done, you still got to get that book out to people. So Iconic Comics was formed, and it is basically our shipping and distribution for the comics that we create. So we're circumventing Amazon and some of the larger uh, distribution centers but still offering two to three day delivery within the United States, which is what Amazon has kind of retrained everyone's brain to expect when it comes to shipping and distribution. So, you know, we're out there trying to create options and, uh, and fix some of these problems. And so far it's worked out really well. So with, with Iconic Comics, then, they are the repository, clearly a website. You can go there. Can you order the comics there mm -hmm. and then get them delivered to you? Or, or what yeah. exactly do they do? It? It's basically just shipping and distribution, and it's, uh, it's a stable house for conservative creatives. Um, okay. uh, Douglas Ernst it, uh, used to, it was a Iraq war vet and used to write for uh, Washington Times and is now creating his own graphic novels called Soul Finder, and he's got... Uh, two books out that I've worked on, I colored, and a third one on the way. And um, it's about a, it's a, it's a group of, of priests who uh, form like this uh, special team to fight supernatural evil in the world. And Iconic was formed so all of us could have a place to put our books in, in one spot on, on the web to where people can go and order them and get them delivered within two to three days. 
So we, you know, we really wanted to try and, you know, create a distribution center because we saw the popularity with the, with the books that we were creating through the crowdfunding. So in short, you guys have, and gals have created, and pooled your talents, pooled your money to bring conservative art to the masses. Yes. And that's something that has to happen because otherwise, uh, what what good is a culture war if only one side's fighting and the other side's well, on the receiving yeah. end? Well, and as we've seen, you know, Amazon can take down books. Uh, they not only take down books, they also take down comic books. Uh, Simon and Schuster, you never really know, you know, what, what, you know if they're going to distribute your book or not. So this was a way to, uh, you know, create a safe space, if you will, uh, for conservative creators to come and, um, and and be a part of a stable house of talent that, like you said, is telling stories uh, that don't tear that you know that aren't necessarily political, but they don't tear down America. You know, you know, Brett. I mean, when talking to you, one of the things that I that I find most doleful is the fact that. In the past, when I was growing up, there was one thing that conservatives and liberals could agree on. Talking about the 80s, Gen X. It was censorship is bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, All right. Yeah. That no one should be allowed to tell you what you may or may not even consider or contemplate. That they are going to decide for you what you may or may not think about. That you what you may or may not say that that was inherently evil and a tool of totalitarians and a dire threat to our free republic. And we thank God every day that we had a First Amendment to protect us from people who would try to usurp that, to steal that from us. And yet today, we find government and businesses and everywhere we turn in the cancel culture trying to censor things, and it's coming from the left. Yeah, man, it's, you know, you know the, the real Avengers was Frank Zappa and John Denver uh, you know, and Dee Snyder standing up in front of the PMRC back in the 80s. I mean, it, you want to talk about a cultural impact that that, uh, that that had on Gen X. You know, that showed us, you know, who the true, you know, the true censors are, the true evil. And that and that was uh, a bunch of senators' wives who decided they didn't like the lyrics of certain and it songs. Was, and largely, and now it's been taken up by the left. This is the Robert Davi Show. We've been talking to Brett R. Smith, professional commercial artist. You can find him at brs76.com. I encourage you to do it. Safe travels to Robert and hope you bring home a bouncing baby movie. I'm Al Simon, 91 years young. I created Balance 7 20 years ago. At 67, I went to see the doctor for the first time in my life and found out that I had medical problems. He told me that was normal for my age. I don't believe God intended us to be sick and old. I decided to find something to bring my health back. For 10 years, I studied pH and how important it is to the human system. Balance 7 gave me back what I lost by getting older. I no longer get out of bed with a joint discomfort. Balance 7 can do for you what it has done for me and many others. In three days' time, you'll feel more energy, less joint discomfort, and clarity of thinking. No doctor or hospital can do what Balance 7 can do for you. Balance 7 is the key to unlocking the healthy immune system. Bring your body back to balance. Order